U.S. equities finished the first half of the year on a strongly positive note, while sovereign bond markets continue suffering from hawkish central bank decisions and hawkish central bank expectations around the world. Now, the U.S. jobs data will be one of the major highlights and one of the major talking points for this week, along with an OPEC meeting with industry executives and a rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. So welcome to the new week of trading with Swiss Goats. Daily Market Talk. So yes, the first half of this year ends on a super, super positive note for equities and not so much for the sovereign bonds. So this is obviously the exact opposite of what was predicted by analysts and by investors. The bond markets were actually supposed to recover some strength due to economic pains, which should have normally led to a more dovish central bank landscape around the world, while equities, on the other hand, should have suffered due to the economic woes and due to slowing spending from consumers and perhaps a recession. But no, none of it happened. Equities did well, even though profits for corporations fell, well, they fell less than expected by analysts. And more importantly, I think everybody noticed, AI saved the day or saved the half of the year, sending the big technology stocks to a nice, nice bull market in the first half of this year. Bonds, on the other hand, just stumbled as US spending and US growth just remained resilient. I mean, surprisingly resilient, which obviously convinced the Federal Reserve that they should simply keep hiking the interest rates in the US to well, tame inflation. The spread, however, between the US 2 and 10-year yield hit nearly 110 basis points, which is normally an indication of recession in the coming months. But, well, last week's strong, strong economic data released in the US again, combined with Friday's softer than expected PC figure, which is the Fed's favorite gauge of inflation, supported yet again the idea that the US could have that soft landing that they're looking for and that further filled the rally in stocks last Friday. As such, the S&P 500 hit a fresh year high at the last trading day of the first half of this year and gained more than 17% so far this year, while the Nasdaq 100 index soared more than 40% since the year started. Apple hit $194 per share on Friday and closed last week with a valuation above 3 trillion US dollars. And remember, Apple was good during the pandemic times, obviously. It did relatively well during the big technology slow off last year, so that was thanks to its ample cash reserves. And, well, it is still one of the must have stocks in any stock any investment portfolio because at the end of the day they are selling devices that many many of us just look at for hours per day so this is where we are right now in terms of equity markets equities are doing fine sovereigns are under pressure and big techs are doing just super fine now of course this incredible performance uh, of equities especially big technology stocks makes many investors wonder whether the rally could actually continue in the second half of this year and well there are some kind of few reasons why it may not continue this way. The first being the tightening of central bank policies, obviously, because at their meeting in Sinatra in Portugal last week, the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England officials, chiefs, all reiterated their intention to continue hiking the interest rates in their respective countries or zones. In the UK, inflation is so sticky that the government is now putting their hands in the mud and they try to find solutions on their end to limit these price increases besides the Bank of England's rate increases. In the US, the numbers, the inflation numbers, are actually coming down, but not as fast as the Federal Reserve would have wished for. But in the Eurozone, while well, the latest set of inflation figures that were released last Friday were actually rather mixed, although headline inflation in the Eurozone is from 6.1% to 5.5%, well, harmonized core inflation in the Eurozone came slightly lower to 6.8%, which remains more than three times the European Central Bank's inflation target, which is at 2% level. And progress could get slower from here because we benefited from a 
very, very positive base effect, especially regarding the headline inflation in the first half of this year, as the numbers fully digested the energy rally that we saw that was triggered by the war in Ukraine last year. And unfortunately, the second half will probably be more challenging in terms of bringing inflation lower. So this is one reason why the stock markets could not do well and why the stock investors could take their profits, take their gains and just walk away in the second half. But there is the second option, which could actually keep pushing the stock valuations higher. And that's well, an eventual softening in central bank expectations around the world because they became just too hawkish. The Reserve Bank of Australia, for example, is expected to keep its rate unchanged at this week's monetary policy meeting after being partly responsible of the latest hawkish spree in global central bank decisions and expectations last month when actually it raised its rates unexpectedly and surprisingly well, at the last meeting, and that just was a shock for the entire world. So, a new action from the RBA could calm down the nerves this week a little bit, but for that to happen like globally, we also must see some loosening in some parts of the global economy, and the US jobs market is just one place where we want to see some loosening. So, this week, all eyes will again shift to the US jobs data due this Friday. The US NFP is expected to print more than 220 thousand non-farm job additions in June in the US with a steady wage growth of around 0.3% over the month. And remember, when you read these data, the best, best scenario for stock investors is a strong NFP read, not too strong, but strong NFP read combined with softening wages growth. So fingers crossed. Until then, well, there's no major reason why we won't see further gains in the stock markets, especially, especially especially given that this week begins with some kind of good news. Well, first, the Taishin Manufacturing Index for China came in slightly better than expected and slightly above the 50 threshold, hinting at a slight expansion, although sentiment weakened to an eight-month low and new orders for Chinese companies rose at a softer pace. Now, China could well recover in the second half of this year amid the central bank's efforts to boost growth in China, but at this point of the game, it kind of looks like we won't get the growth bang that we were looking for from China. So that's not all bad news, that's also some good news for everyone because that also means that we will probably bypass a dangerous long-lasting rally in energy and commodity prices, which then could be good for helping central banks contain inflationary pressures better and not get just too too hawkish with their rate decisions. For now, oil prices, for example, remain mostly ranged despite the OPEC's malicious efforts to boost these prices artificially by cutting production. The barrel of US crude jumped past the $70 per barrel level on the back of a broad-based risk rally following the US softer than expected PC read last Friday, which obviously fueled some dovish central bank expectations after the data. The Chinese data, the PMI data, it also gives some support this morning to the crude oil, but the 50-day moving average, which is near the $71.30 per barrel level, will likely act as a solid resistance to any rally at this point. Now, this week, though, risks remain tilted to the upside. That's important to note, as OPEC meets with the industry executives. Now, this week's meeting is not a policy meeting, so we won't probably hear any production cuts or any important decision from the OPEC regarding the their uh, production strategy. But what we could still well hear this week is a slowing demand forecast, for example, which would then bring traders to assess another production cut from OPEC down the road when they meet for a policy meeting, and that could boost oil prices higher. But in all cases, we have clearly seen that cutting production hasn't been enough for a sustained price rally so far in crude oil. So any rally that could be triggered by any comments or forecasts this week could be interesting top selling opportunities, at least for sure term traders. And the second good news for this Monday came from Tesla, because Tesla delivered a record number of cars worldwide in the second quarter, something like 466,000 cars, as Elon Musk is up to aggressively cutting the prices of his cars to boost 
sales volumes. Now, it looks like it is paying off for right now. The latest figures will likely keep the Tesla shares on a positive path to challenge the $280 per share level yet again. But competition is not far because the Chinese BYD did better than Tesla, selling more than 700,000 cars last quarter. So that was its best ever quarterly sales as well. BYD shares jumped 2.70% in Hong Kong this morning. But of course, appetite in Chinese stocks remain very, very much limited still due to the geopolitical tensions between the China and the West and, well, that trade war with the US. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipek Oskar Deşke, and thank you for joining me today. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments your reactions and your questions below as usual and follow us on instagram on twitter and on linkedin for regular market updates and subscribe of course to our youtube channel for daily market comments i will meet you again tomorrow and until then good day trading